Hey everybody, I'm Rashta and that's Phil. Today we want to talk to you about the physics behind juggling. I personally do not know how to juggle, but Phil does, so he's going to show us. Just kidding. Nice. So for those of you who may think, what does juggling have to do with physics? Well, there's actually so many simple concepts that come into play, such as velocity, acceleration, the force of gravity, parabolic arcs, and there's actually even an equation that explores the physics of juggling. So I have that for you guys right here. So in a second, we'll talk about these variables, but first I want to talk to you about the man behind the theorem. So yeah, you guessed it, Claude Shannon. He was actually known as founding father of the electronic communications age. He was a famous mathematician and electronic engineer who apparently had a real interest in juggling. He created a robot that could bounce juggle along with the theorem. So getting back to the theorem, Shannon's theorem relates the variables of the pattern's timing with the number of objects being juggled and the number of hands. So let's talk about what that means by looking at the variables in the equation. B equals the number of balls, H equals the number of hands, D equals the dwell time between the catch and the next throw, uh, and F equals the flight time of the ball, and finally E equals the empty time between the throw and the next catch. This equation may look confusing or unfamiliar, but that's okay. We can look at some of the equations that we've learned in physics class and apply them to the physics behind juggling. As a ball is thrown up in the air, we see that kinetic energy goes to potential energy, which means we can use um, one half mv squared equals mgh as long as we have the throw height. The velocity in the y determines how much time is spent in the air. The y component gets shorter due to gravity, while the x component stays the same. So essentially, the time up equals the time down. We can also use the equation y equals the average velocity in the y times time to find the flight time of the ball. Ah, oh, gravity. Without oh, gravity. The most important force when it comes to juggling is gravity. If gravity didn't exist, Phil would not be able to juggle because what he threw up wouldn't come back down. Juggling is made possible because of the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. Hey, so we decided that it would be cool to take a video of Phil juggling and slow it down and show you what it actually looks like with gravity. So here we go. Hey guys, so if you're interested in learning more about the physics behind juggling, you should totally check out an article called Optimal Juggling, the Analysis and Overanalysis of Juggling by Jack Kelvin. We just want to thank Dr. Hamden for giving us this opportunity to get extra credit. Thank you everyone for watching and good luck on your finals.